Metro has always uniquely been about stepping into Artyom's shoes, becoming Artyom, experiencing what life is like in that world, making the choices that you make as you play through, defining who that character is that, that you're playing as. We don't want you to sit down and play Metro and feel like you're playing a game. We want you to step through your monitor and actually participate in the world. For me, exploration is the key. So before I approach a situation, I try to see what is the best angle of attack, and then I strike. But when I strike, I have meticulously planned the escape route, the, where the guys are coming, so I know what kind of the location before. So I had to sneak a bit, enough for me to get the knowledge I need to overcome this specific situation. The game allows you to play as an old school, hardcore player, whether you are taking the stealth approach or you take the firearm approach. I take the second, and I may feel a big challenge to that, and I am happy to overcome the challenge. And people who are playing stealth are also happy. That's quite difficult to, to achieve in, in one large project like that, which was our goal, actually. I believe we have succeeded. The game is enjoyable as hell in both ways. And in both ways, it's also rewarding. We took real care to make sure that the player understands the story no matter the way he might uh, approach it. You might go for a full run and gun, and you could still get uh, what's going on. It's not like you will be uh, depriving yourself of any understanding of the people you are meeting or the events you're going through. But you will certainly lose uh, some of the extras uh, we put into the game. But then again, you're having fun. That's what matters. I'm the god of stealth. I'm a shadow in the night. And I'm the, if it moves, I kill it. We've always wanted the world to react to players' decisions and how they like to approach situations. And so we've always had this underlying system that's been hidden to allow the player to play as they would naturally play and then be able to see the consequences of how they play. There are a lot more opportunities for players to make decisions that might have consequences, and there's a lot more opportunities for players to see those consequences. It's more about immersing yourself in the world and the world reacting realistically to what you do. Now we have much more living and atmospheric experience uh, than in previous Metro game, because even in combat, morality and question of morality, helping our story, helping our world to show player all you do, all decision, kill or don't kill, it's important, because it's not just simple shooter. When behavior, story, AI working together, it's a part of a uh, whole atmospheric system. One of my favorite features in the game, first, is our weapons, how they look, feel, and play. And the second is the huge improvement in the AI. We have really complicated system. Creatures, they decide what should they do next. Do they need to attack? Do they need to retreat? Considering how many monsters are in their group, how many scary monsters are in another group, and how this all works together. It works not only between two groups of monsters, but also with the player influence on all the situation. Makes a lot of great random encounters in the game. We try to simulate like in the real world. It's very important to create and player a feeling of real and breathing world. В общем, с момента обсуждения концепции игры с лидом мы пришли к выводу, что чем более детализированным будет звучание, тем более реалистичнее будет картинка. Для того, чтобы погрузить игрока в настоящую реальность, все-таки важно уделить внимание каждой мелочи. По максимуму мы стараемся озвучить все пространство, которое представлено на картинке, и то, как это происходит в реальной жизни. We have the saying that fear has a wide eyes. And I must say fear has a wide ears. First person shooters are mostly about the action. But in Metro you can sit back and just enjoy the sound scenery of each level. Making a good game is not the work for one or two persons. It's a huge team that's 
working hard for the years. I didn't think that it would be so tough making and testing games. Testing is fun and easy. It's like riding a bike while the bike is on fire and you're on fire and everything is on fire and you're in hell. My experience was <laughs> something like that. When some kind of face effects and rigs and physics and ragdoll are bugging, it always looks very funny. We have special storage when we make screenshots or short videos. We store it for the years. And when you feel sad or <laughs> something like that, you open the directory, you look at the screenshots. It's kind of fun. Stepan, we're breaking camp. I think coming to the end of the project, it's always kind of surreal. We spent three, four years working on something. The team's accomplishments progress over that time from ground zero, and you don't get to really like step back and, and see what this thing looks like as an entire product as, as easily as you might think. And when you do get the, those chances, um, it's pretty cool to see. And when you finally start to put all those pieces together, it was a huge moment because we actually got to see how all of that effort leading up to that point comes together into something that feels like a game and feels like an experience. It feels like something that's real, a real product that we can release that players can uh, can enjoy. And it you know feels like it's something that you can really be proud of. Like wow, it's like you know it's a, it's a cool thing to see it in a box. There's, there's always that feeling of like wow, we did it. It's hard to believe that uh, the things we make here are beloved to the millions of people, and that's the most thing I'm proud of. That we're making the product that so many people like. I think that when you play a game you worked for years, and it really likes you, you know that you were a part of this great project, then you can be proud of that. Everyone is proud of what they've created here the way the 4A is. Everyone is here doing what they want to do. From the very early days when the team got together and they said, we're going to make our own engine, we're going to make our own games. And they, they set out with a specific game in mind as well. You know, the, the original Metro 2033, that was the game they wanted to make. So everyone, everyone has that sort of mentality of, this is a position they want to be in. It's a really friendly environment. Everyone wants to be there as well. Everyone wants to be around the team. One of our company heads, Prof, is, is absolutely amazing at rallying the troops with his Spartan speeches. And there's that, that sort of sense of camaraderie sticks, and it, it, it really holds the team together. During working on beta version, uh, I received stroke, and uh, team finishing the game without me. So playing the, the game, I am really proud that uh, I worry about that, no, perfect. I'm worried about that, no. So guys did it perfect. We're working on a passion project. I do know that uh, quite a lot of studios uh, have something that uh, they love and they work on it and they're pretty happy about that. But uh, with us, uh, it's maybe a bit different in that uh, we're working from a personal experiences uh, and uh, it is uh, a unique type of fun. I would say that I'm mostly proud actually about our relationship. We stayed kind of friends and friend relationship between each other and we managed to finish this project working actually all together as a team. We always really find a way to achieve our dreams, to follow it and there's always a price for these, for these dreams. This is mainly what the story of our job is about, his fight his way to his dreams. We never place comfort of our working before our goals. It's all only possible when all people lives and works like one family. We know like if we got hard, we will achieve, we will follow our dreams, everything comes through. <laughs>